Can we just take a moment to appreciate this milkmaid braid because it took me far too long to get it right. Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. My name is Alex and today I am bringing you my April TBR. Now the month of April is gonna be a little bit all over the place. We obviously are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and don't really know what that is gonna mean just in the weeks to come. So my work has actually been relatively steady and I am very, very thankful for that. But who knows what, how it is going to be affected throughout the month of April. But regardless, I do have a pretty ambitious TBR here and it's going to kind of be put together as we go through this video. I do have several books that I have in mind that I want to read in the month of April, but I'm also going to be drawing from my two TBR jars like I do every month. And I am also planning to participate in the Owl's Magical Readathon during the month of April, so I do have a set TBR so far of what I'm planning to read for that, but as I draw from my TBR jars, that might change. I have a ton of books out from the library. Who knows how many of them I'm actually going to get to. This video is going to be a little all over the place, but by the end of it, hopefully we will have a solid TBR. So before we get into the video, if you're new here and you're not already, be sure to go down and hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. And without further ado, let's get started. So to start us off, I'm going to be talking about the new release that I'm going to be reading for the month of April, and that is going to be The King of Crows by Libba Bray. This is the fourth and final book in the Diviner series. I adore this series, as you guys know, and I'm sure that so many of you do too. I have the, this copy out from the library, but I do plan to pick it up on audiobook, but maybe I'll follow along as we go. I am just excited to get into this one. This is a chunker, but I am still, regardless, planning to power through this one in the month of April. Very, very excited to be wrapping up this series. Of course, I also want to let you guys know that I'm going to be reading Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, which is the fourth book in the Harry Potter series. I've been reading these one book per month all the way through July and this is where we are at for April. I'm excited to get into this one. I've really been enjoying rereading this series and this one is going to be part of my Owl's TBR which I will get to in just a minute and I'll let you know what prompt if it's for but I'm gonna be reading this in the month of April. So now I'm going to get into my TBR jar picks and from there whatever I wind up picking I'm going to see if they will fit into my Owls TBR and if not I'll let you guys know what else I'm going to be reading for the Owls. So we're going to start out with my series jar. If you guys haven't seen me do this before in my series jar are the names of a ton of different series that I have started and not yet finished. So whatever series that I pull out of here I will either have to just read the next book in the series or go back and reread the whatever book I'm on before moving on to the second book just depending on how I feel if I feel like I need a refresher to continue on with the series. I'm hoping that I will not have to reread a book this month because of everything else that's going on, but we'll see. So what series are we going to pull for April? Akatar, A Court of Thorns and Roses. A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J Mass. Everybody knows and loves this series by now. I have only read this first one, so the next one that I would be reading would be Akamaf, A Court of Mist and Fury, but I do not remember a single thing about this book, so I am definitely going to have to reread this one before moving on to the second book. This book actually could fit into one of my Owls categories, so I think I might use it for that. So now we know that this book and Akamaf are going to be on my April TBR, and I have heard amazing things about A Court of Mist and Fury. I don't think I've ever heard a bad review about that book, so I'm definitely excited to get into this. Hopefully I can just binge read both of them together. Maybe I'll get motivated and read Akawar as well. We'll just see what happens. And then the next jar that we're going to pick from is my genre jar. So this has a bunch of different genres that I don't read a whole lot from. And whatever genre I pick out, I'm going to have to choose three novels that fit under that genre and read them in the month of April. So let's see what we get. Adult fantasy would actually be kind of nice this month, but we'll see what we get. Nonfiction. So I have yet to pull nonfiction. If you guys haven't seen this before, I do six different genres twice each in the jar. So that makes out 12, one for each month. And I have not yet picked nonfiction. So this should be really, really interesting. And I don't think any of them are going to fit in for my owls prompts. So April is going to be a month packed full of reading. So the first one that I'm going to pick up for the nonfiction category is The End of Your Life Book Club by Will Schwabe. Now, this follows Will soon after his mother has been diagnosed with cancer and when he accompanies her on her chemotherapy treatments he finds himself asking her what she is reading and they wind up forming kind of a book club where they just read the same books together and talk about it and I just think it's a reflection on Will trying to take care of an ailing parent and what he learned reading these books with his mother. I've heard wonderful things about this one from Kate on the Currently Reading podcast and I'm very, very interested to get into it and I think it's going to be a tearjerker. 
On a completely different note, I also want to read I'll Be Gone in the Dark by Michelle McNamara. Michelle McNamara was a true crime journalist that spent decades of her life investigating the Golden State Killer, and unfortunately she passed away before she could finish the investigation. The Golden State Killer has since been caught, I do believe, but I'm really, really interested to get into this one. I actually picked this to fit a challenge on reading a book that you don't know anything about the subject matter. I know very, very little about the Golden State Killer, so I'm really, really interested to get into this one and get a little bit of background on this case and hear it from somebody that spent years and years and years of her life trying to track him down. And the last nonfiction that I want to read this month is Behind the Beautiful Forevers by Catherine Boo. Now the subtitle of this book kind of sums up what it is about and it is Life, Death, and Hope in a Mumbai Undercity. So the author went into this little makeshift settlement that was near the Mumbai airport and I think that it just kind of talks about how Mumbai is this rich city city that is full of culture and diversity, but this tiny settlement has been neglected and just the kind of contrast between the city and the settlement. So to be honest, I'm not too sure on the exact nature of this, but I have heard incredible things about it. I actually first got this recommendation from John Green on a YouTube video years and years ago. So I've been interested in it for a while and I'm finally, I think I'm ready to pick it up. Now, before we get into my Owl's TBR, I'm going to talk to you about the four arcs that I'm going to be reading in the month of April. So first I have Night Owls and Summer Skies by Rebecca Sullivan, which is going to be coming out on May 12th. Now this book, I don't know a whole lot about it, but from what I can gather from the synopsis, it follows this girl who is thrust into this summer camp when her mom suddenly gets remarried and goes on this honeymoon with her new husband and the girl winds up falling in love with another girl at the camp. It sounds like some adorable cute female female YA romance which I am all here for. I also have an arc of Breath Like Water by Anna Garzab and this is going to be coming out on May 19th. This book follows our main character Susanna and she is very very passionate about swimming and she's really good at it and she's starting to build up her career but then this slowdown that we find out about comes and ruins her career and she winds up getting a new swimming coach named Harry. I assume that they fall in love. I assume that they grow together, yada yada. This book gives me kind of the same vibes as Every Reason We Shouldn't, which I read a couple months ago and I'm hoping that I will love this one just as much as that one. Now both of those arcs are coming from NetGalley and also have two arcs that come from Edelweiss. So the first arc that I have is called I Am Here Now by Barbara Botner and this one is also going to be publishing on May 19th. Now this is a novel in verse and it's set in the 1960s and it follows our main character Maisie who is an artist, I believe she's a painter, and she meets this other girl and her mother who are both artists and it's kind of a coming of age story finding herself. I feel like this one is going to be really poignant and powerful and touching and I don't feel like I've read that much historical fiction that's written in verse so I think it's going to be a really interesting balance. And the last arc that I have in the month of April, I cannot even believe that I'm saying this, but I have an arc of Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This book is going to be releasing on May 5th and it follows two sisters. One of them lives in New York City, one of them lives in the Dominican Republic and they do not know about each other. They share a father and one day he gets on this plane and it crashes and he ends up passing away and that is when the two sisters come to learn about the other one and they come together and it's going to be beautiful and heartbreaking and heartwarming and everything that I'm ready for. You guys know this is my most anticipated release of 2020. I absolutely cannot believe that I got an arc of it. I'm so thankful and lucky to have it and I cannot wait to read it. So now finally we are going to get into my owls TBR. Now for the owls I am going to be aiming for the career of librarian which requires you to pass five different owls so I'm going to tell you which ones those are and what the prompts are and the books. I am planning to read all of these or the majority of these in the same week and make a reading vlog for that. Let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you would be interested in, something that you would watch, and then I'll make that happen. So the first owl that I have to take is for Ancient Runes and you have to have a book that has a heart on the cover or in the title. And for that one, I'm going to be using Night Owls and Summer Skies. There is a teeny, teeny, tiny heart way up in the corner, but it counts and I'm using it. The next one I have to take is Arithmancy. You have to read a book outside of your favorite genre and my favorite genre is contemporary. So really anything outside of that. So for that, I could use any of the books that I've put here, but I'm just gonna put in Akatar. I think this one is one I'm definitely gonna be getting done. And even though it's chunky, I feel like I could probably fit it in in the same week as a lot of these other ones. The next one I have to read is Defense Against the Dark Arts, which you have to read a book that is set at the sea or the coast. And for this one, I'm gonna be reading The Summer I Turn Pretty by Jenny Han. So this book follows our main character, Belly 
Kelly and she goes to this beach house every summer and there are these three brothers that she knows that are over there and they're best friends during the summer and then one summer she winds up falling in love with one of them. I imagine that it's going to be just your typical standard fun YA contemporary. Everybody knows and loves the To All the Boys I've Loved Before series by Jenny Han so I'm interested to see if I like it and how it compares with her newer things and how she's improved in her writing. I also have to take the owl for History of Magic, which involves a book with witches or wizards. And so obviously for that one, I'm going to be working through Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I will not finish this one in that one week of reading my owls books, but I will finish it throughout the month. So I will be reading it during that owls vlog. And the last owl that I have to take is Transfiguration, which is to read a book that involves shape-shifting. And for this one, I'm going to be picking up Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. Now, this is another one that I don't know a ton about, but I do know that it's a graphic novel, which means it's very short. And the audiobook is actually narrated by a full cast. So I think what I may try to do is get a copy of the graphic novel and then listen to the audiobook at the same time. I feel like that would be a really interesting experience. And I really know nothing about this other than the main character is a shapeshifter. So we're going to fly through this one and just see how it is. So that is everything that is on my official TBR. Wish me luck. I have been in quite a bit of a TV mood recently, so I am 100% not guaranteeing that these are all going to be happening. But just for shits and giggles, I'm going to go ahead and show you the rest of the books that I have checked out from the library to show you how insane it is. Any one of these books I may wind up slipping in in between some of the other ones just if I need a break or want a little taste of something different. You guys know I am pretty much a mood reader, so I may wind up straying from my original TBR and getting to some of these. We're just gonna have to see what happens. I'm hoping that I'll have enough time during this quarantine to get to a good majority of these or maybe pick some of them up on audio if I can't do it physically. But regardless, here's everything else that I have checked out from the library. Leave Me by Gail Foreman, In Five Years by Rebecca Searle, Lovely War by Julie Berry, Saint X by Alexis Scheitkin, Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera, A Fatal Grace by Louise Penny, Una Out of Order by Margarita Montemore, and And I Darken by Kirsten White. So if one of those books that I just mentioned is one of your favorites and you think that I definitely need to prioritize it this month, let me know that in the comments down below. That is it for today's video. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and let me know some of the books that are on your TBR for April. As always, if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to go down and give it a big thumbs up as well as hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon down below so that you never miss out on any of my content. So until next time, bye!